Good afternoon, YouTube Lamb. It is Em Lee, your everyday light worker. And I am here to shed light on corruption and toxicity in corporate America, probably the corporate world. But we're going to be taking examples from the show Succession to show how certain environments, certain corporate environments, can become incredibly toxic. And we're going to look at how this particular um, fictional corporate environment known as Waystar Roy Co. Um, for its name that in part because of its founder, Logan Roy. And he left his business that he built himself to his children, which um, he asked for um, Kendall, Siobhan, um, Roman, Romulus is actually his name, and then um, Connor, his first son by a different wife who always gets shut out of the trio. So really it's this trio of siblings that are trying to take over this company on behalf of their father. That's what the show is about. That's why it's called Succession. But within the series, we see a lot of how work environments become really toxic, not for the people who own the corporation or are running the corporation. They're the ones who usually make it very toxic, and that's what happened in the show. And we don't get a lot from the workers who are exposed to this toxicity. Like they have one or two examples of people who are regular people who actually work for the corporation. They don't ever get a spotlight. So we can't really know how the toxicity is impacting regular everyday people. But because it's a show that focuses on the, the top tier echelon of, you know, the executive level of a corporation. So we're talking general counsel, um, the chief financial officer, the chief operating officer. So those are your top positions within a corporation usually. So we see within that sector how it um, becomes pretty toxic. So um, Logan Roy has been grooming his sons to take over this corporation, and he never really considered um, grooming his daughter. So he has four sons, no, three sons and one daughter. Um, one son doesn't want any, he doesn't want to participate, the oldest one, Connor, he doesn't want to participate. His second oldest son, Kendall, was being groomed to take over, but Kendall had a lot of difficulties. So then, um, because of the difficulties with, with Kendall, um, Logan, the father, switched to his second son, Romulus, or his third son, really, Romulus. But Romulus is problematic as well. So both Kendall and um, Romulus or Rome, they have a lot of problems with regard to just knowing how to be in that position of a chief operating officer or a chief executive officer. It's, officer. it's an extremely stressful, stressful position. And um, they have some of the skills, but not all the skills because, you know, they were put there by their father. You know, they were kind of handed what most people have to fight for so viciously. So then we have Shiv, his daughter. Now, how Shiv even comes into the corporation is kind of typical. So what has happened is this corporation has a sexual harassment scandal, a wage theft exploitation scandal that is just massive in scope and it breaks. And um, how it breaks is that someone who worked for the corporation is being funded to break and tell all the secrets by a uh, investor or shareholder who is opposed to Logan Roy. So this is a publicly traded company. It has shareholders that are not in the family. And the shareholders who are not in the family are trying to get the company to do certain things that they want done. And um, Logan Roy, who holds most of the shares in, with his family, he is um, very opposed to doing things things any kind of way other than what he wants. So when these shareholders um, kind of try to get some leverage on him by getting this guy who wants work for him, setting him up to tell the story about what went on in this, this corrupt corporation, 
he kind of um, is in trouble. He's, he's facing some, some difficulties. And what corporations have to do when they are in this kind of trouble is they have to say to, you know, the world, oh, oh, my bad. We're going to clean this up. We're going to make sure that this is, um, this never happens again. Oh, gee, we don't know how this happened. They absolutely know how it happened. It's, you know, it's, this is how it goes down a lot of the time. It's, it's not that unusual. So what they do almost 100% of the time, and I, I to the point where I think this is stupid and people know, they should know exactly what you're doing, is if the issue has to do with um, women or minorities, they will bring in a woman or a minority as a token to um, discuss the issues and make everybody think, oh, look, look, it's it's cool because, you know, they brought in a woman or a minority to talk about how they are not um, being unfair or hostile to women or minorities. Uh, this is the thinking to me, two-year-old thinking, but all the time. I, I can You can count on that like clockwork. So for the first time, Siobhan is brought into the company and she's promised that she's going to get a shot at being the chief executive officer. And she's really excited about this because she's been cut out of this boys club and just dismissed and sidelined. And this is her family. So really the only family that she knows um, is her father and her three brothers. That's a family that she grew up in. And she wants to participate in the business like they participate in the business. This is really all that their family does. So when she gets her shot, she's like all in. And I think it is pretty much agreed by everyone who's watched this show that she, out of all of this man's children, she is the smartest. She can, she has a lot of the skills to, um, to be a chief executive officer. She understands how to make deals. She understands how to, you know, negotiate with different people in a professional way because the, the two sons do a lot of things that are highly unprofessional and it gets them in trouble. Like they, people who they're trying to be making deals with, stop talking to them, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Siobhan is really on it. She's really working very hard. She's, she's professional. She's getting things done, but she is in a catch 22 that women in, in these corporate um, positions often are. And the catch 22 is that if she comes across as very masculine and telling men what to do and, you know, as acting as a typical CEO, as a male typical CEO would act, promise you, I promise you, she is going to be hated. She is going to be despised by all of the men that are working under her. And she was brought in by her father as a president. So that is not, you know, even a title, like he made up the title. He's like, you know, Siobhan Roy is the president and she's going to speak to how it is that we are um, cleaning up this this mess that we have with, you know, one division of our corporation. She's going to speak to that, right? So she attempts to, to do that, um, but nobody is, 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 is playing along with her. All of the men are like, she's telling you what to do, make her stop, make her go away. She doesn't seem to understand that she's just a token. She's not really supposed to have any power. Nobody says that exactly, but basically that is what's said about her. So, um, with regard to that, um, she figures it out pretty quickly that she's not really going to be let into this boys club because she's, you know, getting shut down by everyone who's supposed to be working for her. They're not really doing anything that she asked them to do. They're not really, you know, giving her reports on the deals they're trying to make. They're not really just not cooperating with her at all. They go run, tell their father, hey, her father, she's she's doing too much. Please, please make her stop. So she realizes pretty quickly what's, what's going on. But at the same time, her father is sick. He's He keeps having, you know, physical problems, mental problems. He had a stroke. He's, he's, he's suffering. Um, he's breaking down. And um, she is really trying to save her family's company because there's a lot of problems with this company that need to be dealt with. It needs to be addressed. So it comes to like this critical moment where 
you know, it's all going to fall apart. The other shareholders are going to overtake the company unless they do a deal with them. And she's working on the deal. She works on the deal with the, the, the other shareholders that are trying to sabotage the company. She gives them a deal that gives them a little more power. It gives them a little more power, but it also gives Saban um, a lot more power than she's ever had. She gets a seat on the board, which she did not have before. So she finessed and negotiated herself into this new deal. And while it saves the company, because her father was completely incapacitated at this time when this decision had to be made, so she made the decision and um, she kind of went over her father's head to do this because he, but he really couldn't, he, he was having some um, a health crisis. So he couldn't make the call. He couldn't make the decision at that time when the health crisis is over and she tells him what she did. And so she was speaking on his behalf. He um, was really angry about it because he's not a stupid man. So he realizes that, you know, she did do this thing that saved the company, but he's not going to admit that. He's not going to praise her. He's not going to give her any, um, you know, he's not going to pat her on the back for that because he also realized that at the same time, she did this passive aggressive thing to give herself more power and he doesn't like that. So what he ends up doing is screaming at her, you know, everybody that was working on this deal and wanting this deal to go through to save the company. So that's everybody that's in this room from this clip that I'm going to link below. They're all in the room and they are all relieved that um, Siobhan has done this thing where she is... Um, you know, she has managed to save this company at the 11th hour. So they all realize that. But her father, who is a CEO, is not going to sing her praises at all. He wouldn't sing anybody's praises because that's just how he is. People say he's a narcissist. He's he's quite a character. That's, that's all, I, all I'm going to say about Logan Roy. But, um, you know, my point that I want to make about all of this is that how Savan has been treated is really typical of how many women are treated in male-dominated corporate environments. When they have power, especially if they have a lot of power like Siobhan did, it is deeply, deeply resented. And they have to find a balance. It, it's just like Savan's whole professional demeanor is that she's going to act like a man. Well, if that is what you choose to do and you're a woman, it's going to backfire. Just men absolutely hate that, um, despise that. They attack that. They, they really make women who decide to present in that manner, which Saban does and the way that she walks and the way that she talks and the way that she talks to people. She's like, I'm just going to imitate my father as much as I possibly can. And, um, she kind of gets away with it, but she gets a lot of hatred for doing that. And that's typical. That's typical in corporate environments. That's typical really in any male-dominated workspace. So take, for example, police, fire. You're going to have that kind of reaction to a woman um, coming in and trying to present herself as one of the boys in the boys club. There's a lot of deep resentment for that. So, um, you know, that's, that's what this character faces. And, um, you know, she's smart. So she ends up finessing her way into a position of safety, but, um, she's treacherous. She is someone who, you know, kind of schemes and plots sometimes to her own disadvantage and um, certainly to anyone who would think about dealing with her, it's certainly going to be to your disadvantage because she's she's not loyal to anyone but herself. Now, she is honest about that. She's like, look, this is the world that I live in. I have to look out for myself. No one else is going to do that. And, you know, that's, that's you know, definitely w what I'm all about. She could, you know, she needs to be more finessed about it. You know, she's no no Littlefinger. So Littlefinger from the Game of Thrones was one of the most 
scheming, plotting, finessing characters I've ever seen in in modern literature. So she's, you know, she gets caught up. She she doesn't always think it through. It it's dangerous for her. But um because she tends to keep her irons in so many fires, things work out for her. Things work out. So you know, if you're a woman that is in that kind of really intense, um, male-dominated corporate environment, you can learn some things from Siobhan. You could learn what to do and what not to do. One thing about Siobhan is that she's very smart and she's very aware of the environment and what's going on and, you know, what kind of moves should be made. She's very aware of those kinds of things at all the times. But what her downfall is, is that she tends to act quickly, rashly, abruptly, and she thinks that she can just tell people what to do instead of working with them and trying to figure that out. Um, you know, that's, that's what is that issue with Savan. So take a look at the clip below. Um, I'm going to put some Savan clips below so you can take a look and try to figure and see what is going wrong with her and how she's interacting in the work environment. And also, do you think what's going on with her is fair or not? Do you think that she has caused some of these problems, brought them on herself? Or is it possible to for, for to her to have avoided some of these problems by, you know, taking a different tack, a different way of of dealing with the the problems that she's confronted with just food for thought bye